Hi everybody, welcome to part five of my Richard Lehman novel series, reviewing all the novels of Richard Lehman. And today we are with Richard Lehman's most problematic novel, his debut, The Cellar, from 1980. Uh, obviously I will talk a lot about why I call it his most problematic novel during the review, but firstly, as usual, let me just show off what it looks like. This has been very well read, as you can see. Uh, there's the cover art, uh, there is the spine, this is one of his shortest novels. Here is the back, uh, which I will read. So the synopsis says, Visitors flock to see the Beast House with its blood-soaked corridors and creaky doors. Armed with instamatics and video cameras, these poor souls enter the forbidden house never to return. The deeper the tourists go into the house, the darker their nightmares become. The men are dealt with quickly, the women have to wait longer. But the worst part of the house is actually beneath the haunted structure. There lies an even more terrifying presence waiting for its next victim. Don't even think about going into the cellar. That synopsis is a little bit misleading, because very, very few tourists who enter this house uh, end up in any kind of real danger. Uh, this implies that you know everyone who goes in there gets bumped off. They don't. And it also, that thing about haunted, um, where is it? Well, yeah, the haunted structure. This is, again, misleading, because uh, when Stephen King dismissed this book in Dan's Macabre, he described it as a haunted house book, which makes me question if he even read it, because there's nothing to do with ghosts in this. Nothing is haunted in this book. Um, and... When I first picked this up, I was expecting something very, very different. Like I said, this is Lehman's first book. No one knew anything about what kind of writer he was. <clears throat> Excuse me. With the benefit of hindsight, Lehman almost never touched on the supernatural. He preferred to deal with kind of human monsters or natural monsters. And I thought this was going to be a haunted house book. It isn't. So what is it then? Well, like I said, it's a highly problematic book. It was published in 1980. I th it's set in, in 1978, it seems. I don't think it directly states that, but I've been able to figure out from some of the information in the book that that's when it's set. Let me go into the synopsis of it first. So it opens with a prologue where this police officer has been called to a disturbance at Beast House, which is a tourist attraction. Someone has broken in. And in this, uh, who has broken in? It's a father and his young son who earlier in the day had been visiting the Beast House and the son had got spooked. He thought he'd seen a monster. So the father wants to show him that there's nothing to be afraid of and has dragged him there in the dead of night to show him that there's nothing in the house. Questionable parenting technique, but um, the police officer then, you know, goes inside the house to see what's going on. And some kind of monster appears and they all die. That's the prologue. The main bulk of the story, we're introduced to the main characters of... <coughs> again, I'm sorry. Of Donna, who is the mother of Sandy, who is 12 years old. And <coughs> Donna's husband, Ray... Roy, sorry. Has just been released from prison. He was sentenced to six years in prison for raping their daughter. You know, very lenient sentence. And he's just got out of prison and he's coming for them. And Donna is very afraid of this because he's an absolute monster. And she's very afraid of what he's going to do to Sandy when he catches them. Again, I'm sorry for my coughing here. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been sick for the last few days. Um, yeah, so Donna and Sandy. So they they flee. They flee their home. And where do they flee to? They flee to a place called Malcasa Point, which is where the Beast House is located. It's accidental how they end up there. They're not planning to go there. It's just they're on the run and they pitch up there. Um, <clears throat> that's the first group of characters. The second group is a guy called Judd, who is the first layman hero uh, of, his, of layman's career. He's the archetypal layman hero. Uh, guy in his 40s, um, very masculine, very macho, usually got a... <clears throat> a backstory involving some kind of uh, military career which has made him into this hypersensitive, you know, caring guy from all the horrors he's seen in life. And uh, Judd, his name is short for Judgment, by the way, 
Judge Judd meets another character called Larry, an old guy. He's eccentric. He speaks in a very eccentric way. He's always quoting Edgar Allan Poe. In fact, he took his surname is Usher from Poe. Um, and Larry, many, many, many years before, as a young boy, he went into the Beast House with a friend of his and saw the Beast. Uh, his friend died in the attack. Larry escaped. And for many years now, for decades, he's been harboring this uh, memory and it's been driving him nuts. So he's going to go back and try and kill the Beast all these years later. And Judd ends up helping him with that. <clears throat> Finally, I have to say, what is the Beast House? The Beast House is an old Victorian mansion. And in the in 1911, I think it was, the woman who lived there, Lily Thorne, she came across a beast. Uh, this beast is some... Um, how to describe it? How does he describe it? Well, it's got a like a pig's face. It's completely white. It's albino. It's hairless. And it has an enormous penis. And on the end of the penis is a mouth. Um... And it's sexually voracious. It rapes everyone that it comes into contact with. And uh, yeah, so that's the beast house. Across under, <clears throat> there's a tunnel that leads under the road to a house across the street where the owners of the beast house live. <clears throat> there are no windows in this house uh, to keep out the sun so that the beast can be protected. There's no point going into more of the plot because it's as so silly as it all sounds. Uh, what, let me say why I said it's problematic. In my introduction video to Richard Lehman's novels, I had said that there is an enormous amount of rape and sexual violence in his books. And nowhere is, is that more true than in this short book. There is a lot of nastiness crammed into these 250 pages. And that does involve the uh, horrific sexual assault on a child. Roy, the evil husband... He breaks into a house and, and kills these parents and takes hostage a nine-year-old girl called Joni. And during the novel, he rapes her. And a layman doesn't pull back from describing it either. Now, a lot of people, even layman fans, seem to hate this book very much. They think it's trash. Even for layman, it's really badly written. It's juvenile, very voyeuristic. It doesn't take at all seriously subjects which maybe should be taken seriously. You know, I think that... I said in my introduction video that when Lehman does describe rape, it's with none of the actual horror of it. It's pure pornography. It's voyeurism. <clears throat> he never deals with the psychological impact of it and the emotional impact. Everyone just recovers from it almost instantly. And that includes Joni here, this nine-year-old who's been horrendously abused. But <clears throat> we don't really get any insight into how this is affecting her. It is just he's describing the rape of a child and... That's very, very, very off-putting indeed, um, as is all the other abuse that goes on in this book and sexual assault, <clears throat> including bestiality. The beasts do end up raping. Uh, indeed, yeah, at the end, 12-year-old Sandy ends up getting raped by these uh, bestial things and enjoying it. You know, typical layman. He has, he has women enjoying sexual abuse. And girls as children, I mean. Yeah, this book kind of, if you hate it, it deserves to be hated, to be honest. It's its a nasty little thing, this this book. But you know what? As you can see by how many times I've read it, I do enjoy it. Uh, I take it for what it is. I I tune out the, the, the sexual violence part of it and focus only on the story, which is so ridiculous as to be fun. It's so bad it's good, as you would say about a, a crappy 80s horror film. And that's what this is, by the way. This is an equivalent of a really terrible 80s horror film. It's pulpy, it's trash, it's poorly done, but it's, it's, it is actually fun in a way. I enjoyed Malcasa Point. I enjoy the characters. Sandy and Donna, Larry and Judd, those, that quartet, are really cool people to spend time with. And as the beginning of the Beast House Chronicles, it is a good beginning. The ending is absolutely preposterous. It has uh, Sandy and Donna pregnant from these beasts. Uh, I know I'm spoiling it here, but it's so ridiculous. Um, and Sandy is uh, eagerly awaiting to know which beast has impregnated her because she's fallen in love with them. It's... it's uh, it will end up being classic layman. I mean, this is a good blueprint for how he would go on. His books are mad and ludicrous. But like I said, I do like it very much. I've got to wrap this up because I'm coming to the end of my time. But um, recommended, yeah. Um, like I said, even among layman fans, people either really like it 
or despise it. Most people who I've seen review this on YouTube say that it's utter trash. They say Lehman has written good books, but this is not an example of a good Lehman book. This is absolute garbage. And I can't refute that. From a writing point of view, it's really bad sometimes. It's so juvenile and uh, just poorly written, as a lot of Lehman's early work would be. But despite all of its flaws, this is an important book to me in my horror reading uh, history. This and uh, a few other books by different writers form the core of what got me into horror fiction. And uh, reading this as a very young man, as a teenager, is different to reading it as an adult. As an adult, you are more impacted by how trivially he treats uh, very what should be serious themes like raping children. As a kid, you, I didn't really pay that much attention to it, I don't think. But uh, now I do, and it, it really hits me just how nasty some of the stuff that goes on in this book is. So I don't know if I can say, you know, people should read this, because if you are turned off by those things I've just described, you will despise this. But there are good things in it. There are, and it does set up what becomes a very interesting and a very good series of novels. So I'm going to end this now. That's Richard Lehman's The Cellar. I like it very much, despite all of its problems. And I'm going to immediately after this be, going, be doing the second book in the series. So uh, thank you for watching if you did watch this far. And I'll be along soon with the second book in the Beast House Chronicles. Talk to you soon. Take care.